Good afternoon, everyone. I think we're going to go ahead and get started. It's uh, just about one now. So um, welcome to the new release of Eyesight and Tosca uh, seminar. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce our uh, presenters today. We have Jeff Bond, a senior technical sales specialist uh, with Simulia. Uh, he's in the area of automation and optimization. He holds an MS and BS uh, in mechanical engineering from North Carolina State University, and he's a registered professional engineer. He has over 35 years of experience in engineering design and analysis of equipment and structures. Uh, he's worked in various consulting roles for a nuclear facility and finally in air filtration research prior to employment with Smulia. Uh, he was part of the Ingenious Software when it was acquired by Smulia in 2008, and he's worked with Eyesight for 15 years, uh, first in technical support uh, where he's interacted directly with Eyesight users and now in business development. And I'm going to introduce our other presenter today, Kausta Lemier. Uh, he's also a senior technical sales specialist uh, with Simulia. He joined in 2014, and he's currently a senior technical specialist in the transportation and mobility industry team. He provides technical pre-sales support to the BT sales team and focuses on optimization applications with Simulia Tosca. Uh, he has over 13 years of experience in the automotive CAE world and has worked at various global locations. Uh, prior to joining DS, Kaustub has held positions at OEMs like Ford, Volvo, Chrysler, and has had experience in the chassis, body, and powertrain domains. And he has a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from University of Bombay and a master's degree in mechanical engineering from the University of Cincinnati. Uh, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Kaustub, who's going to get us uh, started today. Okay. So uh, good morning and good afternoon to everybody. Uh, my name is Kaustub Limai, and what I'm going to do today is uh, go through the Tosca update uh, seminar part of it, and then my colleague Jeff Pond will go over the eyesight part. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the Tosca part right now, and uh, so here we go. So what I'm going to talk about is the updates to Tosca Structure 2016 as well as uh, Tosca Fluid 2016. So when we started uh, as Abacus originally in 1978, uh, that was a long time ago. And at that time, it, Abacus was owned by HKS, and it was an independent company. And then the source system bought Abacus uh, or HKS in 2005, uh, in 2005 and formed the Simulia brand. After that, there have been several acquisitions. Uh, so Ingenious Software was acquired in 2008, and then iSight joined the Simulia portfolio. FE Design was acquired in 2013, and Tosca joined the Simulia portfolio. And then uh, also Safe Technology as well was acquired in 2013, and that's when FE Safe joined the Simulia portfolio. Last year in 2014, uh, we also acquired Simpac, and then Simpac is now also part of the Simulia portfolio. <coughs> but what are we talking about when we talk about the portfolio? What we want to harness is the power of the portfolio. So we have Abacus, which is a proven FE solver technology. We have iSight, which is a process automation and design optimization software. We have Tosca, which is a non-parametric structural design optimization software. And we also have FE Safe, which is a fatigue analysis and durability prediction software. So these are what we call together the power of the portfolio uh, softwares. Now, what we would like to do is not just be able to use these in isolation, but harness them together and be able to use them uh, conjunctionally so that you can harness the complete power of the portfolio. And this is what we started doing last year. But last year we still had this question where all of the softwares in the portfolio still had uh, their own release numbers. So Abacus was 614, uh, Tosca was 81, iSight was 59, Tosca Fluid was 2.4, FEC for 6.5, and it became very confusing to understand which version would release when and what was the exact version number. So to do away with that, this year 
what we've decided is uh, we would have consistent release and consistent uh, versioning numbers as well for all of the softwares that we have. So in order to do that, we've decided to go ahead and uh, have just one number. And so Abacus would be Abacus 2016, iSight would be iSight 2016, Tosca would be Tosca 2016, and FESAFE would be FESAFE 2016. And this numbering is going to remain consistent throughout, so for future years as well. So down the line, you will no longer see an Abacus 614 or 615 or Tosca 8 or 9. You, you will see uh, consistent numbering, so it will be Abacus 2017, 2018, and so on and so forth. Uh, what we've also done is we've unified the licensing to enable the power of the portfolio. So we have an interactive licensing called the QAX uh, or the Abacus CE extended type of token licensing where this is a single license that enables uh, you to use all of Simulia's graphical user interfaces. So you can use Abacus CE, you can use the iSight GUI and you can use the FESAFE interactive UI as well. We've also combined the, the solver tokens uh, to call them compute extended tokens or QXTs and with this you can access all of the solver technologies within the Simulia portfolio. So with the QXT you can essentially use Abacus solver, iSight uh, process execution, the Tosca optimization task and the FESA fatigue and durability analysis. Uh, let's look a little bit deeper into Tosca now. So as users probably already know, Tosca has two components, uh, Tosca structure, which is essentially to optimize the structural design part of it, and then Tosca fluid, which is uh, based on CFD technology, and it is to optimize fluid flow design concepts. So uh, with Tosca, we have uh, four different modules between Tosca structure and uh, one module for Tosca Fluid. So all the four modules of Tosca structure, which are namely topology, sizing, shape, and bead, they have the ability to interact with uh, uh, commercial finite element solvers. So you can use Abacus, ANSYS, or NASTRAN in conjunction with, soft, with Tosca to do your uh, structural optimizations. And similarly, with Fluid, you have, uh, again, commercial CFD codes like Star CCM Plus and ANSYS Fluent that interact with Tosca Fluid topology for the optimized channel flow. Now, with the new release of Tosca 2016 uh, for both Fluid and Structure, we have also updated the FE solver support. So Tosca Structure 2016 now uh, has the ability to interact with Abacus 2016, ANSYS 16.0, as well as MSC Nastran 2014.0. And then Tosca Fluid, uh, the, for the solver support, it can now work with Start CCM 10.04, uh, as well as ANSYS Fluent 16.0. Uh, a little bit about the optimization module within Abacus CAE. So with the release of Tosca Structure 2016 and Abacus 2016, you now have the ability to also do bead optimization from within of Abacus CAE. Previously, only topology, sizing, and shape were supported from within Abacus CAE. Now you can also use Abacus CAE to set up bead optimization as well. We have also enhanced uh, the smoothing and extraction uh, process uh, in Abacus CAE. So earlier you, you could uh, not extract uh, the STL by part instances, but you can do that now. You, uh, you could only export the complete model before, but now you have the ability to uh, extract by part instances as well. In terms of the core Tosca structure enhancements, uh, Let's look at the first one. The first one is the casting manufacturing constraint. Uh, this is for topology optimization. And what we have now is within the sensitivity-based topology optimization, we have this new uh, parameter called uh, filter param. And when you toggle on filter param equal to yes, uh, without changing any other uh, settings, 
you essentially get a new algorithm which basically uh, does the same optimization but it requires fewer iterations than the existing manufacturing constraint algorithm. Uh, what it also does is, uh, if you look at this model, and this is uh, more relevant when you have axisymmetric models, uh, with the old parameter where filter param was no, you would require about 33 iterations and you would have about 30% relative mass. But then with the new algorithm, you uh, cut that, that, that down to 29 iterations and about 25% relative mass. And you can also see that there are uh, fewer intermediate density elements, so your results are more refined as well. Moving on to the sizing optimization enhancements, uh, we have uh, two major enhancements in the Tosca sizing module. Uh, the first one is for NVH applications. So you can now use NVH type of design responses along with task sizing to do uh, sizing based optimizations. So for example, you now have the ability to say minimize mass uh, but keeping the amplitude levels of uh, the acoustic modes uh, as constant. You can also do an optimization where you have say restrictions on the acoustic modes for air cavity as well. Uh, and there are a few different design responses that you can use. You can use uh, um, acceleration, you can use velocity, uh, you can use amplitude, you can use phase as well as uh, sound pressure level as well. Um, then we also have the, this new uh, optimization possibility in sizing where you can optimize for circular beams as well. Uh, the only constraint is that right now the, the only support we have is for type of uh, B31 and a circular section. Uh, previously sizing only supported uh, optimization for shell elements but now we are starting to introduce uh, sizing for circular beams as well. The limitations that we had before for sizing are still there so there is only limited nonlinear support right now. Uh, we support contact uh, both inside and outside the design area, but uh, for nonlinear material and NL jom that is only supported outside of the design area. It's not supported inside the design area right now. So with this circular beams, uh, you could do essentially a sizing where say you want to minimize the, the energy stiffness measure, but uh, keep the original structural mass. Then you can specify what are the upper and lower limits for the circular beams. So in this particular example, for I have the lower bound and upper bound specified and then I have generated a, a, a beam structure for my uh, part of my component and I'm going to do the optimization and what you get then is essentially about 400% higher stiffness for the same mass. So it will come up with an optimized distribution for the for the circular beams and all, as well as the thickness of the circular beams as well. Uh, the next part is uh, the shape optimization enhancements and here we have uh, a significant change from before. So earlier we had uh, shape optimization only based on uh, the optimality criteria. So you could only do shape control controller based type of optimizations. But with Tosca 2016, we now have a sensitivity based shape optimization as well. So essentially what you can do is uh, where earlier you could only do a reduction of stress or increase of durability along with the volume constraint, you now have the flexibility for different types of optimization task definitions. And you can also optimize for uh, say mechanical behavior outside of the design area which was a limitation for Tosca shape controller. But with the sensitivity you then get what we call the far away effects or optimize for um, design responses outside of the design area. So an example would be this uh, particular Conrod example where say my design area is the area in blue. This is a, a group of nodes and I want to optimize for stresses but my max stress hotspot is actually outside of my design area. It's inside the circular hole here. Uh, 
um, and I also have some manufacturing constraints as well. So with the sensitivity based optimization you can do this where you can optimize for uh, stress hotspots both inside and outside of the design area and you can see that keeping the mass constant we are able to reduce the max stress in the design area as well as outside of the design area. Then some additional enhancements uh, for Tosca structure. Uh, the first is that now with the stress constraint we can support temperature type of boundary conditions as well which was uh, a limiting factor before. Uh, you could not do stress uh, constraint with a temperature boundary condition but you can do that now. We've also introduced a new type of target so we can do a max min type of, our, uh, of target in the objective function uh, except for the bead controller and the shape sensitivity. Uh, earlier you could do either a min or a max or a min max but not a max min but now you can also do a max min as well. Uh, we also have a little bit enhancement about the behavior of inequality constraints uh, especially when you have a relative magnitude design response. So let's say for example if you had a relative uh, displacement constraint where you wanted to keep the displacement uh, within minus 3 millimeters for example. Uh, what would happen earlier is that if the displacement went to minus 6 millimeters, uh, in reality it violates the constraint but uh, because numerically it is still lower than the minus 3 limit, uh, it would be a problem and what Tosca used to do is automatically change the constraint from lesser uh, than or equal to greater than and equal and vice versa. Essentially it used to take the absolute value. Uh, this behavior is still default but it can now be changed with the op param parameter where you use this mod underscore neg underscore rel underscore constraint and you can then keep the original uh, uh, naming convention as well as the original numberings so you can still keep the values as, as negative numbers and it will understand that uh, what you're looking for is a relative magnitude inequality constraint. Uh, a, a bit of advice about this though, uh, even though they, uh, you can now use the inequality constraints with relative magnitude design responses, uh, as a general practice I, I would still recommend that you use uh, all the inequality constraints with an absolute number as far as possible except for uh, design responses like volume where it makes more sense to use relative design responses. And then uh, the last one is that Tosca also supports white space in the group names now where in the previous releases the white uh, space was already uh, automatically replaced by an underscore but then this might lead to some issues if you have duplication of group names for example. Uh, with that we look at Tosca Fluid now. So for Tosca Fluid we have uh, uh, the big change is that Tosca Fluid 2016 is now available for Windows as well. Earlier Tosca Fluid was only available for Unix uh, and Linux but now it's available for Windows as well. There is also a significant acceleration in the convergence uh, performance. Uh, this is based on newly formulated optimality criteria and then so refreshed uh, the solver interfaces uh, which we looked at a little bit before. Uh, so we, we can now use uh, a star CCM version 10.04 as well as ANSYS Flow M16 as well. So that's so, all I had uh, for the, the Tosca update part of it. I will now switch and transfer the ball to my colleague Jeff Bond who will go through the eyesight part of it. Thanks, Kostab. And thank you also to Katie for uh, putting this all together, making this happen. Um, Katie, can you confirm that you can see me and see my screen? Or yep. hear me and see my screen? Yep, looks perfect. Okay. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and proceed then. Um, so I'm going to be talking about what's new for EyeSight and SEE 2016. And for sake of easiness, I'm going to refer to EyeSight rather than EyeSight and SEE all the time. 
uh, just, just something to make it easier for me to say the words. So I wanted to recap. Um, EyeSight has been around for quite some time, as, as Kostub showed in his slide. Um, and we have continued to make annual releases. 5.8 was, was released for general availability in 2013, 5.9 in 2014. Um, EyeSight 2016 was released on November 27th, so it's only been on the streets for about a week or so. Uh, and we are already in planning for the EyeSight 2017 for release similarly in late 2016. In addition to general releases, we uh, have continued to make regular maintenance releases available. So 5.8-5 was released in October 2014. 5.9-4 was released in July 2015. 5.9-5 was in September 2015. And there is now a scheduled EyeSight 5.9-6 that will be released probably in the late spring of 2016. And also to review something that Costa explained well, um, we have a powerful suite of simulation tools. And there has been some confusion over what version represent what compatibility with, with Abacus 614, EyeSight 5.9, Tosca Structure 8.1 and Tosca Fluid 2.4 and EffiSafe 6.5. Uh, so what we're doing is we're making this more efficient by providing a, a common numbering sch scheme and a common release number and packaging them all as part of the extended packaging. So alignment for release was, is going to be consistent with the, uh, the future product, the 3D Experience platform. So the power of the portfolio, which includes Abacus, EyeSight, EffiSafe, and, and Tosca, will continue a regular release cycle. And that is going to be consistent with a continuing release cycle for the new, uh, for the new future version products, uh, collectively known as the 3D Experience. So what, is optim what does optimize mean? It's a verb to make something as perfect, as effective, or functional as po possible. Optimization is a noun, but it's also a process. And it's a simulation. And, and in optimization, a simulation is a single step, a data point in the process. It's something that you model, you solve, and then you examine the results. And in order to obtain optimization, You've got to search for the best. You've got to follow a path or a journey to some level of engineering perfection. And in the past, by many people, this was done manually based on experience and some trial and error. Uh, and what we've found through the years, within, uh, first with Ingenious and now, now within Simulia, is that automation can add power to that search. And by adding some intelligence or some uh, smarts to the optimization algorithms, you can make it efficient as well. So EyeSight, from the standpoint of a, of, of a single desktop user, allows you to simulate uh, flows of, of jobs and workflows that, that's, that address a particular question that you have. For so many years, engineers were tasked with doing one thing and then taking the answer and plugging it into the next thing and taking that answer and, and plugging it into the next thing. And, and what EyeSight has, uh, has brought to the table is an automation of that process. And in the course of that, what we've allowed the user to do is develop a certain amount of customization through either scripting or our open component architecture. And we've also allowed with certain components uh, on a certain amount of uh, limited distributing computing, distributed computing, excuse me, through either LSF, SSH, or PBS uh, for, uh, once again, very specific components. And once we have that design flow put together, we have uh, an entire suite of exploration components that can, can drive your process to a logical conclusion, whether that be a design of experiments or an optimization or some sort of Monte Carlo assessment, for, for example. And then finally, 
uh, as I'm sure you're aware, we, we have some really great interactive data analysis or graphics available that you can view real time and also uh, study after the fact to uh, uh, obtain additional information about your answers, to, to repose your question and, and reanalyze the results. So what happens if you go beyond the desktop? How do you extend eyesight capabilities? Because you as, a, as an engineer sitting at your desk using eyesight have, have to face certain limitations. And I'm sure that there are times when you wonder, how can I take advantage of my high uh, performance computing cluster? Or how do I deal with some uh, idle resources that I could be taking advantage of? And maybe you have remote applications, something that can't run on your desktop but can run on another machine. Or maybe you've just got some IT issues related to security and managed environments and networks and such. And then you may actually need collaboration. What if you're doing a multidisciplinary approach to a problem solution and you're not the only one with inputs? What if you need to collaborate with others and, and gather information from them as you proceed? And then there's also the types of engineers who are just waiting for answers. Uh, they don't provide inputs. They're not working with you. They're waiting to see what your results are. Maybe they want to know what the answer is as, well, as quickly as you do. Well, the solution to that is using the, the Simulia Execution Engine, or the SEE, as I referred to it earlier. And what the SEE allows you to do is to take advantage of distributed resource management. That is, the, we, we've got a, an SEE that governs the execution of the workflow, uh, distributing to stations that can assist with the computations, uh, and provide and, and uh, facilitate parallel execution of work items, and perform a certain amount of load balancing if you're using LSF as your distribution agent. Um, we also allow for collaboration. In this way, you, you publish a model that not only you have inputs to, but others do. And then finally, uh, through the SEE, we have the capability to provide the, the web top or a custom web interface that allows the user to take advantage of what you've developed as a model. So now that I've, uh, I've, I've told you where we've been, so now let's see where we're going with EyeSight 2016 enhancements. You saw in EyeSight 5.9 that we released an SEE that was based on a, a, a Tom E application server in, comb in combination with a Derby database. And when you install these, they are configured and run ready when installation completes. So the SEE that I just described can be installed on your desktop and on a multiple number of stations in uh, well less than, than 30 minutes, and you can be up and running and ready to roll. Um, for 2016, there's no change in the supported traditional versions of the application servers that we've used in the past. Both WebSphere at version 8.5 and WebLogic at version 12C R1 are still the supported versions. However, with the release of EyeSight and SEE 2016, we also support uh, a, a different middleware combination that involves Tommy and Oracle. Uh, in this case, the Oracle database version requirement is 11G R2, and the user must install and configure Oracle separately in accordance with our documentation. So you won't be run ready uh, upon installation, but you will be very shortly after you've configured. We've also enhanced a number of components. I wanted to list these all here, but I'm going to go through each one separately in, in a few more pages. Uh, other general enhancements associated with EyeSight is the installer that we use now supports TUI, that is text-based user interface, and silent modes of installation. So your IT department should be happy to find that they can do remote installations and silent installations on your behalf. We've changed how our documentation is presented. iCite 5.9 and before provided documentation with the installation 
it was available both by, by HTML browser window and by PDF. With the release of iSight uh, and SEE 2016, the documentation is provided with a separate installer and bundled with other Simulia established products. So for those of you who also are Abacus users, you'll recognize this where uh, the, the documentation is installed separately and first and then you move on to the software environment for installation. And then finally in the documentation we finally included the environment settings required for both Excel and Word to work in the SEE environment under security precautions with run as uh, enabled on your stations. Uh, this was an important piece that, that was being handled on an ad hoc basis and now it's formally documented. And then finally, uh, with 2016, we continue to offer the option of either FlexNet or DSLS licensing management um, in combination with the extended packaging license option that Costa spoke of earlier. Um, just a little bit of history, the Tom EE based Simulia execution engine replaced the features of iSight 5.7 and 5.8, which was known as iSight Distributed Execution. And what, what this replacement did was bring us back to the fun functionality that was, that's similar to, to that known as SEE Express, uh, back to the version of iSight 5.6. Um, some pieces of information to know about that is your iSight standalone license can run a single Tom EE based SEE. Uh, you don't need an, an, an SEE license to, to run that single version. Uh, however, if you want to use the web top, that's going to require separate licensing. And an SEE license is still required if you're going to run either multiple Tom e SEEs or if you're going to use your SEE based on the, the commercial versions of the application server, that being WebSphere or WebLogic. And just for those who, who are keeping track, the Tommy performance um, for the SEE in 2016 is, is greatly improved over that for, for iSight 5, uh, SEE 5.9. So going through the components and what we've enhanced here, um, the Abacus component has been modified to support Abacus 6.12 through Abacus 2016. In prior releases, we had, we had struggled very hard to maintain uh, compatibility with all available versions of Abacus. And we found that, that users just aren't going back that far. So we've decided to amend the list that, uh, that is supported. And what that does is, is uh, make it a little bit easier for our testing department to make sure that the Abacus component performs as well as it can. We also now support the SOLIDWORKS associative interface, something that I say 5.9 did not do. And this allows the Abacus component to update the SOLIDWORKS geometry in the CAE model and will allow our SOLIDWORKS users to be able to feed their models directly into the Abacus component. Uh, just as a, an additional note, both SOLIDWORKS and Abacus must be installed on the iSight Design Gateway or if, if you're working in standalone or the SEE station if you're, if you're working in distributed mode through the SEE. And just a typical scenario for, for the, the some SOLIDWORKS associative interface is the upstream component of SOLIDWORKS modifies the geometry and then the downstream Abacus component modifies the, the, the CAE file using that same geometry. And then the file handling is, is, is mapped appropriately to, to make sure that you retreat, retain the information that you started with and the results that you receive. The Adams car component upgrade um, is something that allows, well, Adams Car allows engineering teams to build and test virtual prototypes of vehicles and subsystems. And the Adams Car component 
actually creates a direct link allowing the automated execution of Adam's car and the support parameters associated with it, such as geometry, part data, tire properties, spline data for bushing, damping, and spring, and so forth. And for EyeSight 2016, the Adams Car component is enhanced to support Adams Car 2013 and 2014. The ANSYS Workbench component has been upgraded, allowing direct access to, uh, to the execution of ANSYS Workbench, and has been up enhanced to support versions 14, 14.5, and 15.0, and 16.0. The other neat feature of the ANSYS Workbench component is that it has been enhanced to reuse the initially created ANSYS Workbench process. So we're, what's happened is we're going to be running in persistence with ANSYS Workbench, and that will save time for you users who use ANSYS with EyeSight, because it'll be working with the same process, and ANSYS won't have to start and shut down and restart and shut down with every cycle through the SIM flow. The CATIA V5 component has been upgraded. This, of course, creates a direct link, a direct link to CATIA, and uh, it supports the, the CAT part files, the CAT product files, the CAT analysis piles, files, and uh, all the kinds of parameters that you expect it to support for geometry or meshing, boundary conditions, loads, materials, etc. And for 2016, uh, we support CATIA V5 R23 through R25. The Dimola component has been upgraded. This, of course, is a, a dynamic behavior and interaction um, uh, uh, system model tool for engineering fields such as mechanical, electrical, thermodynamic, and other control systems. Um, EyeSight Dimola component creates that direct link that allows it to execute. And we have a long list of, of uh, versions of Dimola that are supported with this component, that being 2013, 2013 FD01, 2014, 2014 FD01, and 2015. The GT Power component has been upgraded. Um, in response to requests my, primarily from uh, the Detroit area, it's a tool for engine performance analysis, allowing calculation of torque and power curves, airflow volume efficiency, fuel consumption, and emissions. And um, what we're doing is we're supporting now version 7.3, 7.4, and 7.5. And I'll also note that uh, the command line within the component um, has been changed because it has to uh, understand which which version of, of uh, GT Power you're using. So there's now going to be a combo box in the command line to allow you to specify the release that you're using. The SolidWorks component, oh my goodness, excuse me while I ignore that. Um, the EyeSight SolidWorks component creates a, a direct link to SolidWorks allowing automated execution of SolidWorks from EyeSight. It supports uh, provisions for change of parts and assemblies, as well as driving the SolidWorks simulation module within SolidWorks. And we're supporting uh, versions for SolidWorks 2013 uh, through 2015. I guess I need to close something. And now, just to summarize, I wanted to make sure you remembered that um, the EyeSight process components that drive your processes, we have a wide range of, of components available for you to use, and uh, they can all be tailored to, in a certain manner, to support your processes. And the EyeSight application components, both as very specific components and as generic components, are, are available for you. In both this screen and, and the, the process component screens, everything that you see on here is supplied with your installation. When you install EyeSight, these are available either by default or they're available uh, for inclusion from the library that's right there on your installation. Now we also have another class of components 
that are partner components. And these are not available for you by default. They are available through the partners that supply them. And um, it's up to you to access them and to inquire about them. But um, in addition to this website showing here, if you go to our partner components page uh, within the Simulia website, you'll see uh, additional information on how to obtain this, these tools. So iSight 2016 uh, has a, a vast improvement in stability and reliability. Uh, we had 52 customer bugs reported uh, since the release of 5.9 that are closed in this release. And you can see the summary of uh, where they, they took hold and where, where we made some improvements. And just to summarize what I've been talking about for the last 15 minutes or so, um, the Simulia engine uh, execution engine updates associated with Tommy E and the Oracle option, the installer updates for text-based user interface for silent installation, the documentation changes, and of course the component upgrades that we just spoke of. So I just wanted to speak one more time about the, uh, the options for FlexNet and DSLS license management. Um, because some, what I found is some users don't necessarily know how their license is being served and, and whether or not they actually qualify for extended packaging. So by all means, ask if you don't know. Because extended packaging means your license server allows you to deploy many more tools than iSight. You can uh, add Abacus, EffiSafe, or Tosca as, as available and as needed for your particular need. So iSight may be your daily tool, but access to Abacus, EffiSafe, and Tosca provides additional flexibility and capability. So I'm going to turn it back over to Katie so she can uh, talk about the next steps and uh, also moderate any questions that we may have. OK, great. Thank you, Jeff. OK, I'm just going to go through a few things, and then we'll take some questions. We have about 15 minutes for questions. So. So you can find all of our upcoming e-seminars from the Simulia homepage, um, and this e-seminar replay will be available probably in the next couple of weeks, and we'll have that on the learning community. So watch for an email. We'll have details about that. Uh, you can register for a training class at 3ds.com slash Simulia training. You can find um, all of our e-seminar replays uh, for the last year or so also on the learning community. Um, on a variety of topics, um, so check that out if you would like to uh, view some of our past e-seminars. And then please follow us on social media uh, for our latest updates and happenings. We're uh, at 3DS underscore Simulia. So with that, I think we're going to go ahead and take some questions. It looks like some questions came, came in throughout, so I'm just going to get to the top of the list here. Let's see. Okay, the first question, uh, here it is. Uh, for extracting the result from an assembly model which contains many parts and some of the parts are not the design area, does the new version have an option that just extracts the design area, including the frozen area? So, uh, yes, I assume this is a Tosca question, uh, and the answer is that yes, this is possible. Uh, this was actually possible in the older versions as well. So this is not a new feature. It has always been possible to do this. Okay. Um, there's another question that I'm, I'm guessing is also a Tosca question. Uh, it says, can that be applied to drag line cranes and excavators? Um, maybe the user can be a little bit more specific about what can be applied to drag line cranes and excavators. Okay. Maybe they'll write in. I guess we can move on to the next question. Uh, is there any plan to allow Tosca Fluid to work with Abacus CFD? Um, the last I heard was no, but has that changed? Uh, that has not changed for 2016 yet, but uh, we are looking at 
2017 and hopefully that should be supported soon. But I don't have any uh, definitive answer for now. Okay. Uh, we have another uh, Tosca question. How the smoothed result is derived from the mesh result? So uh, what happens is that the, the, from the, the mesh result, the smooth result is uh, derived by doing a smoothing operation in Tosca and then you can export that out into either a CAD format or an STL format. So I mean just as a general rule, if uh, people have more specific questions about how to use a particular feature, I think the closest uh, uh, Simulia support office should be able to answer the questions as well. Okay. Um, there's another question. Uh, any case histories in mineral processing and heavy chemical industries? Uh, is this for Tosca or for iSight? Mm, they didn't specify. Well, I'll go ahead and take a stab at that because um, just recently I saw an internal presentation of um, several Power of the Portfolio test cases or, or uh, case studies rather that um, are going to be available uh, from our uh, uh, for our salespeople to use in presentation to customers. So uh, to get more specific information, I would encourage this person to, uh, to contact his local uh, CSE, Center for Simu Simulation Excellence, and uh, inquire about the new, uh, the new case studies that are going to be available. Okay. Um, there's another eyesight question. Is there documentation on how to incorporate SEE with an existing LSF queuing system cluster? Uh, I, I believe that the answer is going to be mixed. There is certainly uh, our document, uh, excuse me, guides for installation and configuration associated with, with um, the SEE and deploying LSF. Uh, you may get to the point of having to, to put in um, or use DSX client to, to have a support request, but most of the instructions are there and I have not had a chance to review the 2016 instructions for that. So I don't know if any, any of the previous holes have been filled. Okay. Um, if anybody else has any questions, that was the last question. Maybe um, do we need to unmute them, Katie? No. No, they should use the question panel Okay. to ask questions. Um, so we can keep the question panel open for a couple more minutes if people have more questions, but if not, we can uh, shut down a little early but we can certainly give people a couple more minutes. So if you have questions, uh, please use the question panel. This might be a good chance to remind everybody that uh, they should be able to order uh, both Tosca 2016, EyeSight 2016, and EffiSafe and Abacus 2016 for that matter through DSX client um, with a media order. Uh, assuming their license will support that. Uh, it, even though it was, uh, the, the release date is very recent, it should be available for download now. Okay, somebody asked, can we get this presentation? Uh, normally we do not um, give out the actual PowerPoint presentations, but the replay of this will be available, um, as I said before, on the learning community. So that would probably be a good place that if you wanted to um, review anything that was uh, covered in this presentation. And that will be available in the next couple of weeks or so. Okay, I don't see any other questions coming in, so I think we're going to go ahead and, and wrap it up, give you a few minutes back uh, to your day. So um, thank you, everyone, for attending, and thanks to Jeff and Kausta for a great presentation today.
Thank you. Thank, thanks a lot. Everybody have a good weekend. Thank you. All right, bye-bye, everyone.